Angel is saying to you, Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer with a heart full of love. Thank you for all of my blessings. Thank you for answering prayers that I know you are working out for me in your time. Thank you for loving me first. God, I realize that despite all of the beautiful ways you bless me, I am not always consistent in my actions to let you know that I love you too. You ask me to keep your commandments by loving you and loving others. Sadly, sometimes, despite my efforts, I miss the mark and fail miserably. Please forgive me. Forgive me for when my thoughts or actions were not in line with your best for me. I ask you to help me grow closer to you. Please help me do all that you ask of me, even when it seems hard or I am afraid. I do not want to be controlled by my feelings. Let my love for you and others guide me at all times. I want to do everything you ask of me with excellence. I need your wisdom and guidance. Strengthen me and anoint me to do your will. I worship and praise you. You are love and the giver of all good things. Please continue to walk with me every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Dear God, we thank you for your holiness and for making us holy too through Jesus. You are perfect in your righteousness. We can fully surrender to your will because you always do what is right. Thank you for you are just. Your judgment will be unquestionably fair. Your word is true and we can rely on it in good or difficult times. Thank you for your faithfulness, O oh God. Make us all be like you in words and deeds. Thank you, O oh God, because you didn't appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. For dying for us, Jesus, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with you. Let us, therefore, Encourage one another and build each other up. Acknowledged everyone for every effort, big or small. Let your peace rule over us. Make us an inspiration for the idle and disruptive. To lift the disheartened. Be helpful for the weak and be patient with everyone. Do not let us repay evil with evil, but with love and goodness. Strive always to do what is good. Be joyful and not give up on praying continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. Fill us with your presence. O oh, Holy Spirit, so you can fully flow through us and the evil won't have power over us. Keep our spirit, body, and soul blameless until Jesus comes back. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer with a heart full of love. Thank you for all of my blessings. Thank you for answering prayers that I know you are working out for me in your time. Thank you for loving me first. God, I realize that despite all of the beautiful ways you bless me, I am not always consistent in my actions to let you know that I love you too. You ask me to keep your commandments by loving you and loving others. Sadly, sometimes despite my efforts, I miss the mark and fail miserably. Please forgive me. Forgive me for when my thoughts or actions were not in line with your best for me. I ask you to help me grow closer to you. Please help me do all that you ask of me, even when it seems hard or I am afraid. I do not want to be controlled by my feelings. Let my love for you and others guide me at all times. I want to do everything you ask of me with excellence. I need your wisdom and guidance. Strengthen me and anoint me to do your will. I worship and praise you. You are love and the giver of all good things. Please continue to walk with me every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Dear God, we thank you for your holiness and for making us holy too through Jesus. You are perfect in your righteousness. 
we can fully surrender to your will because you always do what is right. Thank you, for you are just. Your judgment will be unquestionably fair. Your word is true, and we can rely on it in good or difficult times. Thank you for your faithfulness, O God. Make us all be like you in words and deeds. Thank you, O God, because you didn't appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. For dying for us, Jesus, so that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with you. Let us, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. Acknowledged everyone for every effort, big or small. Let your peace rule over us. Make us an inspiration for the idle and disruptive. To lift the disheartened. Be helpful for the weak and be patient with everyone. Do not let us repay evil with evil, but with love and goodness. Strive always to do what is good. Be joyful and not give up on praying continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. Fill us with your presence, O Holy Spirit, so you can fully flow through us, and the evil won't have power over us. Keep our spirit, body, and soul blameless until Jesus comes back. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you that we can come to you with boldness and confidence, with open hearts, hearts that want to be filled by you. Always tune in to you and be fully committed. Thank you for all the blessings day in and day out, the beauty of nature, the cast of amazing colors. Thank you also for the storms in our lives that make us closer to you, for the wisdom that we need in every situation. Thank you for rest for the weary soul, body, and spirit. Let us trust in your words, O oh God, for they never fail, to claim your promises in every area of our lives. We don't need to be afraid because you promise that you will never leave or forsake us. Thank you for your ears are open for our prayers and cry for help and thanksgiving. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear God, you sent an angel to declare to Mary that she had been chosen to be the mother of Jesus, the Savior. It was not an easy task for Mary. O oh God, especially in those times, if a woman gets pregnant without a husband, she will be stoned to death. When the angel told Mary that she was greatly favored and the Lord was with her, she was greatly troubled and wondered what kind of greeting it was. Lord, you said and showed many times that you loved me, but sometimes when the going gets tough and when I could not see that you are answering my prayers, it troubles my heart, and I begin to wonder if your word is true. Or is there something that I am doing that is not right? The angel told Mary not to be afraid, and you had said those words also to me many times in the Bible like in Dude. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Like Mary, she saw her impossible situation, but the angel said that nothing is impossible with God. It tells me that if I walk with you, God, nothing will be impossible for me too. Whatever I lack, you will provide. Help me, O God, to be obedient and submit to you as your servant. Even if accepting your favor may cause me pain, heartaches, persecution, suffering, or sacrifices like Mary. Thank you that you will walk with me along the way. When sorrow weighs me down, I will think of Mary and wait patiently for you to finish your plan in my life. I pray in Jesus' name. Luke 1 38. Dear God, let us announce your offer of salvation. Proclaim your good deeds through our lives. Open our ears and our hearts to accept your amazing love. Teach us the right way to fear you, love you, honor you, and live for you. 
Thank you, Jesus, for making yourself a shield for us so that we are saved from severe judgment. The storms of life come and go, but you, O oh God, stays and always be on our sides. So let us follow you in every season of our lives. Let us wait on you with patience and endurance, with joy under all circumstances. Let us always talk the truth with our lips so we won't be trapped by the enemy. I thank you for the abundance of your goodness and for every small and big thing we learn along the way. Let us defend the weak, promote justice, and be your living witnesses in this troubled world. Amen. I'm here today with open hands and an open heart, ready to depend on you to help me through the day and all it will bring my way. Help me be like Nehemiah. Help me come to you for guidance, strength, provision, and protection. As I face tough choices and hard situations, help me remember my belovedness. Help me remember that I am your child and your representative to the world around me. Help me live today in a way that brings honor to your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear God, thank you because through you we can show compassion and kindness to others, even to the persecutors, those that hurt us or dislikes that we believe in you. We can be humble in our successes, gentle to those who are in pain, and be patient while waiting. When we get hurt, you help us to forgive, because you too had forgiven us. Thank you for loving us unconditionally, and through you, we can also love unconditionally. Thank you for your peace that you let rule in our hearts when we are in trouble. Your word is our weapon in every battle that we encounter every day. So let us be rooted and grounded in your word and presence. Thank you, Jesus, for your powerful name that we can use to subdue the enemy. Amen, dear God. Thank you that, according to thy word, John 1, 19, 28, you will give us the words when we need it as we talk with people about you and as we follow you, when we need to defend our faith and whom we serve and which is you. I pray for help to go to me and those that are nearest to me, to make disciples and baptize in your name. Help us to be bold, to be brave, and for your word to flow to us naturally. Send us people who are searching for you, whom we can be a living witness. And Lord, I pray that we will always remain humble and always think of what is best for everyone. Make us, Lord, a tool for you to reach for the lost. Lord, you have given us a purpose for living. May you guide us in those paths. Let us discover the truths from your word, a treasure to share. Amen, dear God. I pray that we will always be strong in you and in the power of your might. Be strong when life's turmoil is tearing us apart. Be enlightened when we are surrounded by darkness. Be thankful even though we don't yet see answers for our prayers. Father, Clothe us with your armor so that we will be protected from the vials of the devil. Let the truth from your words be in our mouths. Your righteousness is seen in us. Your peace to saturate our souls. I pray for our faith to bring us to higher grounds. Thank you for showing us the way to salvation. Let us always pray with thanksgiving and perseverance. Support one another at all times. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus was not rebuking the disciples in this passage. Their faith was real, but it was disordered and unfocused, and was not at work in the important realities of life. The disciples were scattered to their own concerns, and they had interests apart from Jesus Christ. After we have the perfect relationship with God, through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, our faith must be exercised in the realities of everyday life. We will be scattered, not into service, but into the emptiness of our lives, where we will see ruin and barrenness, to know what internal death to God's blessings means. Are we prepared for this? It is certainly not of our own choosing, 
but God engineers our circumstances to take us there. Until we have been through that experience, our faith is sustained only by feelings and by blessings. But once we get there, no matter where God may place us, or what inner emptiness we experience, we can praise God that all is well. That is what is meant by faith being exercised in the realities of life. You will leave me alone. Have we been scattered and have we left Jesus alone by not seeing his providential care for us? Do we not see God at work in our circumstances? Dark times are allowed and come to us through the sovereignty of God. Are we prepared to let God do what he wants with us? Are we prepared to be separated from the outward evident blessings of God? Until Jesus Christ is truly our Lord, we each have goals of our own which we serve. Our faith is real, but it is not yet permanent. And God is never in a hurry. If we are willing to wait, we will see God pointing out that we have been interested only in His blessings instead of in God Himself. The sense of God's blessings is fundamental. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John 16.33 Unyielding spiritual fortitude is what we need. If what we call love doesn't take us beyond ourselves, it is not really love. If we have the idea that love is characterized as cautious, wise, sensible, shrewd, and never taken to extremes, we have missed the true meaning. This may describe affection and it may bring us a warm feeling, but it is not a true and accurate description of love. Have you ever been driven to do something for God, not because you felt that it was useful or your duty to do so, or that there was anything in it for you, but simply because you love Him? Have you ever realized that you can give things to God that are of value to Him? Or are you just sitting around daydreaming about the greatness of His redemption, while neglecting all the things you could be doing for Him? I'm not referring to works which could be regarded as divine and miraculous, but ordinary, simple, human things. Things which would be evidence to God that you are totally surrendered to Him. Have you ever created what Mary of Bethany created in the heart of the Lord Jesus? She has done a good work for me. There are times when it seems as if God watches to see if we will give Him even small gifts of surrender, just to show how genuine our love is for Him. To be surrendered to God is of more value than our personal holiness. Concern over our personal holiness causes us to focus our eyes on ourselves, and we become overly concerned about the way we walk and talk and look out of fear of offending God. But perfect love casts out fear once we are surrendered to God. Warfers John 4.18 We should quit asking ourselves, Am I of any use? And accept the truth that we really are not of much use to Him. The issue is never of being of use, but of being of value to God Himself. Once we have totally surrendered to God, He will work through us all the time. When you make a decision to focus forward and move on, expect to meet resistance. The enemy does not want you to step into the promises of God for your life or to fulfill your purpose, so he will do whatever it takes to discourage, distract, delay, disappoint, or destruct you. You will have to fight to control your thoughts, guard your heart, and strengthen your soul. It's often easier to give up than to keep believing, hoping, and expecting for your breakthrough to happen. This is called a fight of faith because that's exactly what it is. The enemy plays dirty. That's why you feel like throwing in the towel. It's hard. It's messy. It's exhausting. It's discouraging. But I'm here to remind you that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. The enemy is a defeated foe. 
Fix your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. I have promised to meet all your needs according to my glorious riches. Your deepest, most constant need is for my peace. I have planted peace in the garden of your heart, where I live. But there are weeds growing there too. Pride, worry, selfishness, unbelief. I am the gardener, and I am working to rid your heart of those weeds. I do my work in various ways. When you sit quietly with me, I shine the light of my presence directly into your heart. In this heavy light, peace grows abundantly and weeds shrivel up. I also send trials into your life. When you trust me in the midst of trouble, peace flourishes and weeds die away. Thank me for troublesome situations. The peace they can produce far outweighs the trials you endure. Have you ever had a crisis in your life in which you delib, earnestly, and recklessly abandoned everything? It is a crisis of will. You may come to that point many times externally, but it will amount to nothing. The true deep crisis of abandonment, or total surrender, is reached internally, not externally. The giving up of only external things may actually be an indication of your being in total bondage. Have you deliberately committed your will to Jesus Christ? It is a transaction of the will, not of emotion. Any positive emotion that results is simply a superficial blessing arising out of the transaction. If you focus your attention on the emotion, you will never make the transaction. Do not ask God what the transaction is to be, but make the determination to surrender your will regarding whatever you see, whether it is in the shale, low, or the deep, profound places internally. If you have heard Jesus Christ's voice on the waves of the sea, you can let your convictions and your consistency take care of themselves by concentrating on maintaining your intimate relationship to Him. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to reach 500 divine subscribers very soon. Please share this video to your loved ones. Type Amen to affirm. Thanks for watching.